Metro Count, the traffic data specialists. Survey management with site lists. Site lists are recommended for all Metro Count users, especially survey managers and site installers. Why do we use site lists? If we're repetitively monitoring the same site, be they every few months, every year or so on, we only need to enter the site details once and they're saved. It ensures consistency. The same details will be in each report for all report readers. Uh, if we employ others to perform the surveys on our behalf, uh, our colleagues or survey contractors, we can provide them with a small site text file. They can use the details that we want to set up the roadside unit. Finally, with a few simple clicks, you set up the roadside unit and you leave the site. So let's have a look at setting up a site list and how we can use it. Within the Metricount software, MTExec, we select from the top toolbar, File, Open Sites, and already within our software we have example.sit as a site list. I'll open that. So on the site list we have two window panes, as you can see. On the right hand side we have a map, and on the left hand side we have a list of sites. The map is useful, it's not mandatory, and we can have a look at the use of the map in a later video. So the site list on the left hand side includes as columns the first column, uh, the site name or number. The attribute tends to be the GPS coordinates of the site, compass direction and lane number, followed by start time, the roadside unit type, of which we have various within the Metro Count range of products, and the description, where the roadside unit is located. I'll show you one of those so that you can see what's in a site list, right-clicking and edit site. Now you can see that the roadside unit setup details are exactly the same as though you were entering the details straight into a roadside unit. But of course in this case we're just entering them into a list. I'll cancel there. How do we add a site into a site list? There are a few different ways. The first way would be from a blank palette. So let's right click in the white space below the last site and select new site. We could get the initial site list settings from a roadside unit if it had just come back from a survey. In this case, we just select Next, and we have a blank setup screen. I'll enter the details now so that you can see one being set up. The site name, we will include a site number 12345. The attribute will be the GPS coordinates, and I'll come to that in just a moment. Operator, my initials. If we go to location, then I can include the latitude and longitude in these fields. I will add them into the fields that we saw before by ticking those two boxes, select OK, and the GPS coordinates are now in the attribute. Start time will be set to be immediate. Uh, the lockout function, this will be a bi-directional survey, so I will choose 10 millisecond multiple lane. And the site description, will be the road name, New Market Street, and just 50 metres north of Racecourse Road, with the posted speed limit in angle brackets. The next bit of information will be the direction. This road is a north-south road, bi-directional survey. Everything else is correct, and we click OK. Now you'll see immediately we have that site 12345 displayed in the list with the GPS coordinates and that is now saved for use in later time. Another way that we can add a site to a site list is by using the previous site as a starting point. If a lot of the details are the same we don't need to keep adding. So I can right click on that site and select new site. Next. One thing that must change is the site name. It is a new site. Let's choose 12350 as the next site. The coordinates are different. I'll delete those. We're now on the next road. Racecourse Road. And the description is outside number 45. With a speed limit changed. We're now on an east-west road and we select OK. 
we now have the next site. And we can keep going and keep going, and that will ensure that we create something that can be termed a master list of all sites that need to be surveyed. And let's save that. To create a new site list, we go to the top toolbar, select File, New Site List, and give this site list a name. We're now left with a blank screen. Two window panes, as we know, on the right hand side will be for the map. And now we add a site, as we did before, and continue on creating our master site list. Don't forget to always save your site list before you leave. So what do we do with the site list once they're created? How does that give us a benefit when we're out on site? I have a roadside unit here waiting to be set up. We would be doing this out on site, but I'll just give you an example of how it would be done. If I select the roadside unit in the list, select Setup, it gives me a list of all the details that will be entered into the roadside unit on the screen. I select OK, and the setup is complete. Three clicks, and we've set up the roadside unit. How do I know that? I'll go to the usual roadside unit status icon, and I now have all those details displayed in front of me on the status page. The roadside unit is active and running normally. I can close. I know that this roadside unit has been set up on the site list. I also have this icon. It's a checkbox, a tick mark, that tells me that this roadside unit has been set up and is running. So now let's head out to the field and set up a roadside unit. Okay, now it's time to set up our roadside unit from the site list that we created in the office. Using our Windows tablet, I'm going to set up that site list now. So MTExec is now open. I can choose to open the sites, my site list that I created earlier, and I open that one. As you remember, we have the map on the right hand side and the site list on the left. This site is site 12345. I choose that from the site list, click on Setup, and OK. Gives me the details of the site on the screen so I can check it. If everything's all right, select OK. And that roadside unit is now set up. As the status message tells us, setup is complete. Select status to confirm operation. And select OK. You will notice that an icon has appeared next to the site, the tick box, that tells us that survey has now begun. I will check the RSU status, and I can see immediately the roadside unit is active, it is running normally, and we can now leave the site safely. Okay, we're now back on site. Some time has passed since we set up the unit. Traffic has flowed over the tubes on the site. We've got data to unload. Let's use our tablet again and our site list to unload the data. So within MT Exec, again, I open the site list that we created. I choose the site to be sure that I'm unloading from the correct site, and I select Unload. Unload options, as usual, allow me to change the name, stop the roadside unit, which I will do, and select Next. Let's start the unload. Of course, this is our first data quality check where we can see at the roadside whether both tubes have been struck equally from day one onwards as the data is being unloaded. So the unload is now complete and we can leave the site being sure that we've got all the data and we can remove the tubes and leave safely.